Hello again, friends. Hope you're all keeping safe and well at the moment. My mother and I have both had our COVID booster jabs, I'm happy to say, and mum's had her flu jab as well, and I'll hopefully be getting my flu jab soon too. So we're as well prepared for the winter as we possibly can be and staying as safe as we possibly can. I've been getting out and about a lot still, which is great. I haven't had any recurrence of the sciatica and back trouble I had during the summer, which is fantastic. But one thing I did do during the summer has actually come to fruition this month, which is a radio interview I did, so I'll talk about that shortly. And then moving back to this past month in November, I've been on a tour of London Zoo, as you'll have seen from a recent video, and explored the illuminated river bridges on the Thames, which has been a lovely sight. There's been a long video about that I've posted recently. And then at home, I've seen an online theatre show, and I've watched Doctor Who and various comedies, and listened to various bits of music. So there's all sorts of bits and pieces to mention this month. It's been very busy. So there's a lot more detail in the blog post as per usual. None of this is sponsored or gifted either. So yeah, do go and check out the links in the description below and the details on my blog post if you want to find out more about any of this. But for now, I'm just going to give you my usual recap of the month and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get on with it. So my latest moment of fame occurred when I appeared on RNIB Connect Radio's Happy Hour programme, where I was interviewed by the lovely Holly from the blog Life of a Blind Girl. We've followed each other's blogs for quite a long time now, so it's wonderful to be able to finally chat to her. She's very friendly. And I spoke about my move to London five years ago and how I've settled in as a visually impaired person, so I hope that was of interest to people. And if you want to hear it, then you can listen to the podcast of the episode, and the whole thing is great to listen to, of course. But if you want to jump to me, then you can go to the 14-minute mark to hear my interview. And then if you jump to the 33-minute mark near the end, you can hear me introduce the final song of the show that I was able to choose so I hope you enjoy that too you won't hear the full song on the podcast of course because they're not allowed to do that but if you want to hear the full song you can obviously check it out online then in terms of going out and about there are a couple of lovely tours I did recently that you would have seen if you've been following me on here or my other social media channels so the first was an audio described tour of London Zoo which was a lot of fun and the staff were very chatty and knowledgeable and friendly and everything and we got to stroke and feed a camel and stroke some pygmy goats and throw some walnuts to the Red River Hogs and saw butterflies and tortoises and macaws and various other animals so it was a really lovely morning out and I got to meet some lovely people from the visually impaired charity Look as well who were there too so it was a really nice morning and I've upgraded my ticket that I bought to get into the zoo that day to an annual membership so I can go back whenever I like because there's always so much to see there and it's always such a lovely place so I'm really glad I went to that and I can highly recommend going on the audio described tour if they do more next year which they are planning to I believe. And then over a couple of evenings I had a lovely walk along the south bank of the River Thames to have a look at the nine bridges that have been lit up as part of the Illuminated River project. And this is a big artwork, a big permanent new lighting installation where the bridges have been lit up in either different colours that change very subtly or with patterns of white light that move around and they just complement the bridges and the cityscape really nicely. You know, London always looks stunning lit up at night and these just add to it really well without being intrusive. And it was a great chance to test out my new iPhone 13 as well in a nighttime setting. Far better than my iPhone 6 ever was in the dark, that's for sure. So I'm very pleased that everything came out. There's video footage here on my YouTube channel over an hour of it and there's lots of photos in the blog post to go with it as well. So do go and check all that out. Links in the description of course. And there are also audio descriptions of all the bridges by Vocalize as well on their website and they're really interesting to listen to because they give context and history as well as describing what the bridges look like and how the different patterns of light work. So yeah they're really good to listen to as well. Then in terms of theatre, I didn't go to any shows in person this month, but I did enjoy Oliver Twist from Leeds Playhouse Online, which was put on by the disabled performance group Ramps on the Moon. So all of the actors and their characters had a variety of disabilities, and it worked really well. It was fully accessible too, with audio description, captioning and sign language fully integrated. And it was a dramatic adaptation of the story, so it's not a musical, it's a proper adaptation of the original story. So it's quite tough going in some ways in terms of the fact that Oliver is very much abused by various people, but you are rooting for him to be happy and to have a brighter future. And it's not as depressing as that might sound either, you know, as even though it's very dramatic and powerful and emotional and everything. All of the characters are very distinctive and interesting and entertaining, and there's bits of humour in there too. And the costumes are really well done, the atmospheric music is really nice, and just everything about it was really put together nicely. So well done to them for that, I did enjoy that. But of course, as great as that dramatic interpretation was, nothing really compares to Lionel Bart's musical version of the novel, which I've always loved and so many other people love. It's such a classic. I've never seen it in person at the theatre, but I do love the film version from 1968. I've seen that several times and I watched it again on Blu-ray after seeing the theatre show. The songs and the choreography are just stunning and the sets and the costumes are beautiful and the cast are just incredible, including Ron Moody as Fagin. He won a Golden Globe for his performance in that film because he was just so good in that role. And Mark Lester is great as Oliver as well. Yes, his singing is dubbed. It was revealed many years later, but you don't really notice and his acting is great, so it works really, really well. It's actually quite um, strange to think that Mark Lester actually went on to become an osteopath after he retired from acting, a completely different career. And I wish I'd seen him 
him after I'd had my sciatica recently. But yeah, they're both really good in that, as are people like Jack Wilde playing the Artful Dodger, Oliver Reed as Bill Sykes, and Shani Wallace as Nancy, of course. Harry Seacombe as Mr. Bumble, and Leonard Rossiter makes an appearance, and this is some years before he appeared in Rising Damp and Reggie Perrin, and so many other great people. It's such a classic film. So then moving on to TV, and we'll mention Doctor Who to start with, of course, because we had Series 13 recently. And this was unusual because it was a serial for a change, so you had one story spanning the entire series, which we've never had before in the modern era. They used to do it quite a lot in the old days, in what you call the classic era. But since the show was rebooted in 2005, we've only ever had at most two or three part stories, and maybe one or two things that pop up during a series that then become relevant in the finale, but not a full on serial until now. So it's been a nice change to have a big complex story over several episodes. It gets quite confusing at times, there's a lot of mystery in there and a lot of locations and characters and events you have to kind of get your head around, but it all kind of came together nicely in the end, really. All the characters came together to save the day. Not everything was resolved, of course. We don't know exactly how much damage the flux did before it stopped, and there's also lots of questions about the Doctor's past and future, as there always is, so it'll be interesting to see how those things are kind of expanded upon in future episodes, including the final trilogy of specials that's coming up for Jodie, starting on New Year's Day with the Dalek-themed episode. John Bishop, by the way, was very good as new companion Dan Lewis. It was great to see him in the show, and comedian Ashley B is going to be a guest in the Dalek-themed special on New Year's Day as well, so that'll be interesting to see too. But yeah, going back to Flux, and this was a really fun series. Not perfect, of course, a story this complex could never be perfect, really. It was a very ambitious thing to do, especially, you know, with the pandemic going on and everything, but they pulled it off really well as best they could, and I think the standout moment that stuck in my mind, as well as for many other people, was the Doctor transforming into a weeping angel, which was really well visualised, and it was accompanied by great music as well, and even the end credits theme was changed for that episode. They ditched the bass line as if the Doctor's hearts had been stopped, so it was quite an impactful um, end to an episode that. I mean, yes, it was resolved quite quickly in the following episode, as cliffhangers often are, because you can't keep the Doctor trapped for very long, but at that particular moment, it was a big surprise. They had managed to keep that secret, which is very impressive in itself. So, yeah, moments like that and other big moments like the Doctor meeting Division and the revelations that took place there and things like that really did make the show feel quite epic. So then moving on to comedy, and this month my mother and I bought the new DVD box set called Morecambe and Wise at ITV, which features all the surviving episodes from Two of a Kind that they made for ATV and the Morecambe and Wise show that they made for Thames TV and a few other little extra bits and pieces as well. So there's plenty there to go through. But then as we'd never collected Morecambe and Wise's stuff before, you know, and we've never seen it all before either, you know, even my mother didn't see it all when she was younger and I've only seen like Christmas specials and some other clips. We thought we may as well go all out and treat ourselves and buy everything they've done. So we've also bought the complete BBC collection on DVD, all the surviving episodes from their BBC series. Series 5 to 9 have audio description and audio navigation included, which is fantastic. It's a shame not all the series have it, but at least some of them do. There have been some more episodes discovered since that set was released way back in 2010, so there may be another set that comes out at a later date, but this is plenty for my mother and I for now. There's more than enough for us to try and get through for the time being. I've also downloaded the complete BBC Radio 2 series from Audible, which contains all four series of their radio show, some of which is adaptations of their TV sketches and some other new material as well. And then we've also bought their movies too, which probably aren't as good as their TV show but we'll give them a go and see what we think. So we're just going to work our way through that gradually. Like We'll probably watch an episode each day while we're having our dinner or something of the TV series and just see how it takes us to get through it all, basically. But that will keep us going pretty much through most of 2022, I think. Then on BBC One, I've been enjoying the new comedy drama series called The Outlaws, about a group of people doing community service together in Bristol. And it's written by Stephen Merchant, who also stars in it and is well known for his work with Ricky Gervais on The Office and Extras and other bits and pieces, of course. And he's done some solo stuff himself too, including in Stand Up Tour. And it feels like a regular sitcom to begin with and there's a lot of good humour throughout the series but there's also this crime thriller element that creeps in as well where people get involved in different wrongdoings and they kind of escalate as the series progresses and things get increasingly complicated and messy and all the characters have to come together at the end to resolve it between them and that's quite hard to begin with because they're all quite different characters in many ways they're very distinctive you know some of their views can be quite extreme or stereotypical and their behaviours can seem a bit irritating and things like that but you do get to learn more about them and why they are the way they are and why they're doing community service or the different crimes they've committed in things so yeah it's an unlikely bunch of people but it does work out very well and they do come together very nicely and Christopher Walken the big actor from America actually appears in the series as one of those characters and he's very very good and Stephen Merchant has said in several interviews how hard he was to get hold of you know he had to fax him had to dig out a fax machine to get to this guy and then go out to America to see him and thank god he actually agreed to it because he does very well as do all the other actors in this series as well he's got a good bunch together there and we also know already that there's a second series because they filmed it concurrently with the first one so that's going to be coming out soon and I'm looking forward to that. I'm not going to buy the series on DVD or anything but it is very good, it is well worth a watch. Then in terms of other comedy, Taskmaster has had another fantastic series as I've said before. Alan Davis and Victoria Corrin Mitchell were again my favourites because I know them best but it's been a brilliant cast altogether. They've gelled really well and they've really sparred off each 
other nicely, so that's been fun. And we've got a New Year special to look forward to that includes Johnny Peacock among the contestants. And then there's the second Champion of Champions special with the winners from Series 6 to 10. And then the stars of Series 13 have also been announced as well, including Ardlo Handlon, Bridget Christie and others. So there's quite a lot to look forward to from Taskmaster. Over on Gold, the Cockfields has been back for Series 2, and that's a nice gentle comedy written by and starring Joe Wilkinson, who visits his family on the Isle of Wight with his new fiancée, Esther, played by Susanna Fielding, who replaces his old girlfriend, Donna, and his stepfather, Ray, has been replaced as well because Bobby Ball died, of course. And then back on BBC One, we had a new episode of Wurzel Gummidge, which was all about bonfire night this time. So as well as Mackenzie Crook playing the Scarecrow, we had Paul Kay as the bonfire resident, Guy Fawkes, and Toby Jones playing the entire bonfire night committee. So that was good fun. And then over on Dave, I've been enjoying all the new episodes of Whose Line Is It Anyway from America that they've been showing. That's the improvisation game show currently hosted by Aisha Tyler over there. Earlier in the year, they showed episodes from seasons three, four, and five of Aisha Tyler's reign as host. And as they went down so well, they've now been showing episodes from seasons one and two, the remainder of season five and episodes from season six as well so they are really funny and brian styles and colin mockery and wayne brady are great as the regulars and you get greg proops and various other people appearing regularly too so yeah it's just really funny i still laugh at that show a lot and then finally life at the apollo has returned for another new series that's the stand-up show from the hammersmith apollo and the audience is clearly very happy to be back in the theater again after they've been in lockdown and you can't blame them i do skip some of the acts on the show these days i don't always find them very funny they don't always interest me but i do enjoy some of them still like blind comedian chris McCausland. He hosted the first episode very well and I'm seeing him live in person next year which I'm looking forward to. And Angela Barnes hosted an episode as well. I like her and there are other comedians I like here and there. And then as usual I'm also enjoying the topical comedies Mock the Week, Have Got News for You in the Last Leg all of which have their studio audiences back now which is fantastic and they've got a lot to talk about at the moment with everything going on in the news so it's great to have all those back. So then moving on to music and the big thing this month has of course been Get Back the documentary about the Beatles on Disney Plus in three long episodes all directed by Peter Jackson who is most famously known for the Lord of the Rings films of course and it's been entirely created using never before seen footage of the band working on a live album rehearsing for a live show in 1969 which resulted in their famous rooftop concert and their final album Let It Be. It's all taken from the many hours of recordings that have been used to make the original 1970 Let It Be documentary but the Beatles and other people weren't very happy with how the band had been represented and how the sessions had been represented so Peter Jackson trawled through all the footage and has made his own huge documentary series and he's restored it along the way as well. It looks like it was shot yesterday as they've been able to use technical innovations for the visuals and the sound as well. And it really does feel like you're hanging out with a band in the studio day by day, getting insights into how they work and watching them as songs kind of come to fruition out of nowhere, like watching Paul McCartney discovering Get Back is just fascinating, for example. And you get to see lots of jams and rehearsal performances and discussions about the music and other things. And there's good humour between them as well. There's disagreements too, and George Harrison walks out for a little while at one point and things like that. But then things improve again as they move from Twickenham Studios to Apple Studios and they bring in keyboard player Billy Preston and so on and then the final episode culminates with this big rooftop concert they did and there's lots of split screen multi-angle footage showing all the different things going on not just the band doing their excellent performance but also the reactions from the people on the ground watching them and also the police who are trying to stop it happening and it's quite amusing to see them get so frustrated that they're being prevented from doing anything about it so the whole documentary is just so well put together and there is audio description on there as well which is really really useful because there's a lot of text that appears on screen to explain things and subtitles where the audio isn't very clear depending on where the mics were when things were recorded at the time so yeah that's all read out and lots of visual descriptions are read out because it would have been much less engaging without that audio description so I'm really really pleased they included that too and then another big thing this month was ABBA releasing their first album in 40 years called Voyage and that's good I wouldn't say it's their best work by any means you know none of these will become huge classics like some of their big smash hits from the old days but there's still some nice stuff on there they've still got that classic sound they still sound really nice in terms of their vocals and their musical arrangements and everything so it's definitely worth buying if you're an ABBA fan it's really really nice I think some of my favourite tracks are the catchy songs No Doubt About It and Just a Notion but Don't Shut Me Down and Keep an Eye on Dan are also quite good as well and there's some nice ballads on there too including I Still Have Faith in You that opens the album and Little Things that they've released as their Christmas single and so on so yeah it's lovely to have them back and of course they've got their digital show as well in the Olympic Park next year where they've got digital avatars of themselves that they've created using motion capture performing with a live band so while it's a shame not to have the band themselves performing live at least you can see ABBA performing in some way but yeah it's nice to have a new album of material from them it has come out really nicely so then finally moving on to Queen of course and this month has been particularly significant because it's 30 years now since Freddie Mercury passed away and he would have been 75 this year so yeah there have been a lot of ways of celebrating in this month quite rightly to mark that kind of milestone as sad a milestone as that is so there was a documentary on the BBC called Freddie Mercury The Final Act which looked at the last years of Freddie's life and the impact of the AIDS pandemic and the tribute concert 
concert that followed his passing as well. So that was really well put together, really interesting. They spoke to Brian and Roger from the band, of course, and Freddie's sister, Kashmira, and his assistant, Peter Freestone, and journalist David Wigg, who interviewed him, and various people who took part in the tribute concert as well. So that was really interesting and moving. And then the BBC also, on the same night, showed Queen at the BBC, which was a new compilation of Queen's appearances on BBC programmes, including Top of the Pops and the Hammersmith Odeon concert and the Montreux Music Festival as well, and a few other little rarities thrown in, including a nice little outtake from a nationwide interview and stuff. So it was a nice little compilation that was. And then over on Radio 4, there was an episode of Archive on 4 about Freddie Mercury, taking a thorough look across Freddie's whole life, from when he was growing up in Zanzibar, what it would have been like for him back then, and his religious beliefs and his race and how his sexuality and rock star identity developed over the years, and his music as well, of course, including how he used Arabic and Persian lyrics and things like that. And there were various contributors, including friend and biographer Leslie Ann Jones, DJ Bob Harris, who was a friend of the band, and comedian Matt Lucas, who was a big fan of the band, and being gay, he can obviously comment on the sexuality side of things, and people who grew up in Zanzibar around the same time as Freddie, even if they didn't know him, they could give a good insight, and various other people as well. And there are even a few extracts from old interviews with Freddie and Queen, including appearances that they made at Rio and Live Aid. So it's quite interesting to hear all of that. And then over on Radio 2, they had a concert called It's a Kind of Magic, The Queen Story. This was recorded in Malta in September and featured the BBC Concert Orchestra and a rock band with vocalists including Tony Vincent from the Queen Musical We Will Rock You and Tony Hadley from Spandau Ballet and vocal group Capital Voices and various other people. And it told the story of Queen's formation and their progression over the years, not only through their music, but also through the people who inspired them as well. So you've got some of Queen's classic hits in there, including a recreation of their legendary Live Aid set. And then you also got songs by people including Jimi Hendrix, Aretha Franklin, Led Zeppelin, John Lennon, etc. And even a ballet piece by Prokofiev. So it was a nice mixture of material, that concert. And then finally, on a Queen-related note, Brian May and Carrie Ellis have appeared together as special guests on the debut single by Italian tenor Luca Minnelli called Forever and Ever With You. And that's a beautiful track with some nice vocals and harmonies and orchestration. And Brian's guitar adds to it nicely and stuff. So that works very nicely. And that's it. That's the end of a very busy month. I hope you enjoyed trawling through all of that with me and found things of interest in there. December's also a very busy month for me with a couple of theatre shows and meeting various friends and venturing outside the city to explore a bit and celebrating Christmas too, of course. And I hope you have a lovely Christmas yourselves too, whatever you're getting up to. If it's not going to be an easy time for you, then you have my love and sympathy as always. But I hope you're able to find at least some comfort during the season if you can. But yeah, I hope you have a nice time, whatever you're getting up to and whoever it may be with. And if I have any footage to share from the things I get up to during the month, then I will, of course, share it with you between now and the new year like I used to do like I've started doing during the past month it's been great to be able to share additional bits of footage with you once again but yeah in the meantime again I hope you have a lovely time at Christmas don't forget to like comment and subscribe as per usual and I will see you for another video very soon Merry Christmas